Many pundits assess Barcelona's chances in a clash against PSG as rather low. The team from Paris has Kylian Mbappe, and this seems to immediately minimize all strengths of Xavi's side. But what if we say that Barca is the stronger team in this pair that will be able not only to progress past PSG, but also able to take the Champions League trophy? Let us explain why! The face-off between the two Barcelona legends as coaches makes up one of the main intrigues in this epic battle. Luis Enrique vs Xavi. Now this is something to be excited about. Both managers use Barcelona football in their respective clubs. For example, here's what Luis Enrique did in the Coupe de France against Nice. Pay attention to where Hakimi is positioned, while the team is built according to the 3-2-5 formation. And here's how Barca attacked during the match against Las Palmas. Looks familiar right? Total football, which is based on ball possession with the use of sharp lunges and quick interceptions. It's common for Barca and PSG to have a ball possession rate at 60% plus in their games. Will Xavi be able to outplay Luis Enrique? Back in the early February, we would have said no. But now the Catalan's boss finds a way to best his opponents in almost every single match, which is why Blaugrana fans should be optimistic. Since Xavi announced his departure, his boys hasn't lost any of the 11 fixtures, winning 8. The first leg will take place at the Parc des Princes, and Xavi can take advantage of this factor. The fans will push their team forward and Barcelona will just have to play defensively and throw sharp counterattacks, where the speed of Yamal and Rafinha will be given the main role, as well as the experience of Lewandowski, Gundogan and Frankie. You've seen the holes in the red and blue's defense if one intercepts the ball in a situation like this, haven't you? However, the main task will be to stop Mbappe and Dembele, which brings us to point number two. Kylian Mbappe and Ousmane Dembele are the super weapons of modern PSG. Fast dribbling demons capable of destroying any defensive line if you give these guys too much space. So here's the first challenge for Barca. Space. Reducing the space for two stars from Paris will greatly increase the Catalan's chances of reaching the semi-finals. Xavi will definitely be considering ways to shut down Mbappe and Dembele, and in our opinion, Barca's manager may prepare an interesting surprise by putting a nominal central back as a left back, simply because Joao Cancelo does not appear to be a strong contender to face Dembele. Let's think of the most likely scenario, according to which Enrique will put Mbappe on the left and Dembele on the right. Gilles Conde has gained phenomenal form and seems ready even for a duel versus Kylian, while Araujo will play right center back and will always be willing to back up his partner. Kubarsi will take the left center back position, where he will have to keep an eye on the fast left back. Well, probably not Inigo Martinez, since it'll be impossible for him to outrun Usman. Balde with his supersonic speed would definitely come in handy here. But he's injured. Luckily, there is a rather interesting option with Barca Athletic Centre back Mikhail Faye, a 19-year-old prospect who has already been called up for first-team fixtures a couple of times. Xavi is impressed with the player's potential, with him being physically strong, fast, and technical. He is very confident on the ball, and his passing is rated quite high. There is still a chance to go with 17-year-old Hector Ford, but he is significantly weaker than Dembélé in terms of physicality. If Xavi actually decides to involve Faye, then we predict Cancelo starting the game in the midfield. Now imagine what kind of block Xavi can build against PSG even without Balde, Ter Stegen, Koundé, Araujo, Kubarsi, Faye, Christensen, Gundogan Cancelo, Yamal Lewandowski, Rafinha. Nominally, Barca will feature six defenders, but this will prove to be a fairly reliable plan for the first leg, when Mbappe and Dembele will need to be neutralized and shown that they have no chance. Stopping Mbappe and Dembele equals advancing to the next round of the Champions League. Do you agree? The next point of Barcelona's advantage lies in the fact that all the team's leaders turned on the turbo mode in the second half of the season. All of the squad players mentioned the increased intensity of their training sessions, with many going to the gym and practicing on the pitch even on days off. Koundé, Araujo, Christensen, Lewandowski and Rafinha have especially had their performances improved. With the return of Ter Stegen, Barca has restored calmness in the defensive line. The Catalans have five clean sheets in their last 
last six matches. Prior to that, the Spanish side conceded many, too many goals even. The components of this transformation are as follows. Ter Stegen's comeback, Kunde and Araujo's return to their best form, the tremendous progress of 17-year-old Pau Kubarsi, not to mention Christensen's switch to the false defender or defensive midfielder position. On top of that, a huge credit must be given to the overall team effort in the defensive area. Absolutely everyone, Lewandowski included, is running, pressing and working to the last. Have similar transformations occurred at PSG? Sure, the French side is progressing through the season, but the club itself has plenty of problems, the most important of which is the departure of Kylian Mbappe and his tense relationship with Luis Enrique, who often substitutes the footballer and thus teaches the team to play without Mbappe. Sooner or later, their situation could boil over, especially if Barcelona can find a way to stop Kylian. The toxicity at the Paris Saint-Germain still exists. Another factor that plays in Barcelona's favor lies in the emotional aspect. Xavi has managed to build a family atmosphere in the first team. It was especially apparent when the coach announced his retirement at the end of the season and the way the team reacted demonstrates how much they love their boss. The footballers in the club's management often points out how much they would like Xavi to continue coaching Barcelona for the next season, whereas Laporte sees no alternatives to Xavi at all, preferring him to work out his current contract valid until the summer of 2026. In fact, only winning the Champions League title title can change Xavi's mind. Judging by the way Barca gives their all in every match and how well Xavi leads the team, it may turn out that Barcelona have every possibility of not only getting past PSG, but also reaching the Champions League final, as either Atletico Madrid or Borussia Dortmund could become Blaugrana's rivals in the semifinals. Press the like button if you want Barca to win the UCL and keep Xavi as the team's manager. Finally, Barcelona's last trump card, 16-year-old Lamine Yamal, who has emerged as a genuine surprise this season. Lamine owes his success not only to Xavi, but also to Ousmane Dembélé, who betrayed Barca back in the summer by choosing Paris Saint-Germain. Although at the beginning of the summer, he claimed that he wanted to play only for Barcelona and win the Champions League with them. This is how fate swung back to Ousmane and Lamine, marking another great battle of this rivalry. Yamal is a completely unpredictable player, so Nuna Mendes or Lucas Hernandez will have a hard time against Lamin. Beraldo has already met the Barcelona star in a friendly between Spain and Brazil, where the star boy showed what he can do. Of course, Kylian Mbappe's trump card is the most decisive in this fight. Yet, Lamin Yamal can be something of a joker factor, since absolutely no one knows what is in the mind of this 16-year-old, who seems to have just got a taste of big football. My prediction for the first leg versus PSG? 1-0 win. I will score a goal. Lemin states. Can you feel that confidence? It would also be worth mentioning the quality advantage in Barcelona's midfield area, which includes Christensen, Gundogan, Frankie, Pedri, Roberto, and Fermin. Though Luis Enrique has already managed to control Paris Saint-Germain's lineup, which includes Lee, Vitinha, Ugarte, Fabian Ruiz, Zaira Emery, and Danilo. We are expecting a rather meaningful competition here with a slight advantage of Barca's midfield, due to professionals such as Gundogan and Frankie. Guys, that's how we saw the reasons for Barcelona's future victory over PSG. What do you think of it? Share your thoughts and predictions in the comments down below. Football Club channel was with you, the channel of high-quality football journalism. Don't forget to leave us a like and subscribe to our channel. Check out the suggested videos from our other projects and see you soon.